Good morning, everyone. Can you guys hear me and see the screen? Can someone let me know either in the chat box or by answering if you guys can hear me okay? Can you hear me? I can. Good morning, Teresa. Thank you. Good morning, Jenny. I couldn't get on. It took me forever, <laughs> but I'm here. Oh, good, good, good. I'm sorry. This whole go-to meeting thing is still taking a little bit of getting used to. I don't think you're the only one having some issues. I will join you in that. I know. It's like, okay, I tried to do what it said, and then I tried to do internet and like on my phone. I'm like, okay, that didn't work. Okay, let me go back to the phone. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, the good yeah. thing about this one is, is you can totally just dial in with that access code because this one is just us talking. So there's no screens that you have to watch. So you're good. Right, that's what you were saying. So that's why I was like, okay, I have to walk around as I'm doing this, I, you know. I have to tell you, I saw the Christmas ornament on Facebook that your customer made for you, and that is absolutely adorable. She used to be a rep, I think, and it was a special gift given to representatives, but I don't remember what year it was. I would really like to know. Oh, my gosh, it was super it. cute. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is so cute. Yes, I'd like to do a whole Avon tree. Every year I buy some, well, last year, I'm fibbing because last year I didn't, but we got um, the cute angel ornament in one of the um, the bundles that you could buy. I don't remember which bundle it was, but I bought the bundle so I could get the angel ornament. Every year I try to buy something from Avon with, you know, the, an ornament like, and I have one tree in my house that is just Avon ornaments. Oh, yeah, that's uh, It's cute, huh? Okay, well, it is 9.01, so we're going to go ahead and get started, ladies. I'm, okay, I hear, ooh, I hear Laura saying that she can't hear. I think, Miss Kim, I just muted you because I'm fairly certain that the background noise was coming Um coming from your line, but you can unmute yourself, I believe. Um, Laura, can you hear yet? Laura, if you can hear us, let us know in the chat box. Is anybody else not hearing? Can everybody else hear? Can, can you guys tell me in the chat box if you can hear me? Or is Teresa the only one that can hear me? Are people talking? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Is anybody else out there? Can anybody else hear me? We hear background noise, but we don't hear voices. See, and I don't even hear any background. I hear you typing. That's what I hear. Okay. Pat, oh, wait, wait. Okay, somebody just said something in the chat box. Let's see what that is. Patty and I are in the airport, but it's loud at the airport. Okay, totally understandable, Kim and Patty. Hopefully, you guys can still hear me, even though it's loud. Um, if not, try to catch the playback of this. Um, it looks like we only have about six of you guys online, which I know is... Um, is because a lot of you are leaving today for RevFest and it's it's really getting packed as far as schedules go. So we are going to kind of get on with it and, and get on really quickly. Um, the point of today's call is for you guys to really go over some of the great things that you found using the, go, the Grow Conversations this last two weeks and some of the tough spots that you found. I know it can get a little frustrating or a little hard to continue to ask questions. And that's where most of us were getting stuck in, um, in the 
the, you know, the role playing with one another is we wanted to jump right to that bridge. And I'll tell you, I'm right there with you guys. The moment I see the opening leading the door to Avon, I want to just jump right through it. Even though I found the need, the person that we're role playing with or the person that we're talking to in real life may not see the need. So we really went over asking those additional questions to really make the need crystal clear and that's part of digging deeper so what i'd really like to invite you guys to do on today's call is jump on and say hey i had great success with these opening questions or you know i went down a path with this scenario and i hit i i hit a brick wall and i don't know where to go from that so is there anybody on the call that would like to share a grow conversation that you either had or role played that um, that you had great success with or that you hit that that wall and you didn't know where to go? Is there somebody that'd like to share either good or bad? It's going to be a very short call, guys, if nobody shares. Okay, I'm going to assume the reason most people aren't sharing and let me know in the in the chat box. Oh, it's hard to be able to respond quick enough. Okay, Kim, do you have something you want to share? We'll be patient. Kim, if you're talking, we cannot hear you. Continuing questioning. I'm not sure. I think, okay, so um, it, the hard part is continuing the questioning. Yes. So, Kim, do you have an example of a grow conversation that you had over the last two weeks that you got stuck on that you'd like to share with us a specific example maybe we can help you let's make this question a little bit easier while Kim's typing her answer into the chat box how many of you had grow conversations, whether they were role played or whether they were real life chance encounters. How many of you took the time this last two weeks to actually put these grow conversations into play? Not me, I'll be honest. Thank you, Teresa. Okay, I see Laura said she did. Laura, is there any way you can jump on and tell us how it went? Did you, were you role playing? Did you have actual conversations? How did it go? Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, well, I, I did role playing with my daughter and um, I was just um, talking to her and doing all the steps that we practiced and um, I asked her how she felt, if she felt any pressure and stuff, and she said she didn't feel any pressure when I was, I asked her, I merged it to asking for a phone number and, and like setting up like a place to meet and stuff, so. Oh, perfect. So, good. so you were able just to take an everyday conversation with your daughter and kind of listen with her and role play and listen with questions and and she didn't feel pressured at all did she feel like you were being pushy or salesman like no she said she didn't so good good um, good good and that's really that's that's the point of this for those of you who have already had your one-on-ones i know a couple of you still have one-on-ones today that we're going to do after the group call but for those of you that have already had the one-on-ones that's really by the time we get down to it and start doing the role play, that's really what we're hoping to see. And, you know, we've we've gone over it several times. When you look at the team that you have right now 
and you look at the the representatives on your team that either you know perform very well or that you're able to get a hold of when you need to get a hold of them because we know even just getting a hold of some of our team members is a challenge but the ones that you can get a hold of and the ones that continue to work with you and partner with you when we look at who those people are the majority of those people are ones that we have built a relationship with they're ones that we either were friends with prior to them joining our team or somehow within the time that they they joined the team um it they they had you guys found that common ground and built that relationship. So now you have some sort of relationship other than just upline and downline. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get back to, you know, 15, 20 years ago when Avon really truly was your Avon family. And you called your downline members to check in, you know, just just to check in sometimes, just to say, hey, and how are you? And I miss you. And that really is what leads to a great productive team. So you're going to find over the next several modules that everything is based on building a relationship and getting out and talking to people in this type of grow conversation. So when when we when we go on to goal setting and we go on to planning, everything's going to circle back around to how many conversations do you need to have to meet your goals? How many conversations do you need to have when you're planning? How much time do you need to give yourself? Because what is the rate of conversion to your conversation? So everything is going to go back to these conversations. I understand that this last two weeks has been really busy for most of us, myself included, between getting the kids ready for school and getting myself ready for Nashville. School in my town starts the day after we come home from Nashville. So it's definitely a, a crunch time this last couple of weeks to get this, this module in. But just remember that these modules, they don't stop for us. So no matter what's going on, this, this will continue to go. And once you get behind, there's no way to make it up because we have two weeks for each module. Each module takes the two weeks and then we move on to the next one. If you're still on the last one, we don't have time to play catch up. So it is really important that you actually put into play the things that you talk about. Um, between the actual seminar call and the collaboration call. So I would really challenge you, those of you that, that haven't had a chance to really work with this conversational selling, we're jumping right into goal planning on Wednesday. And yes, I said Wednesday. I know our kickoff calls are usually, our seminar calls are usually Tuesdays at noon, but we do have to move this one to Wednesday at noon because of rep fest so this i mean we're going straight in we're going to rep fest those of you that are going and you're going to have jam-packed schedules between now and then but guess what you're going to be seeing six thousand people right and people that aren't involved with avon you know in mingling when we go downtown so these conversations can be had with anybody you can have a grow conversation with your spouse, with your child, like Laura did. You can have a grow conversation with another Avon representative, whether it be role playing or just a regular conversation and you're just practicing asking questions. Whatever that looks like for you in the next few days, whether you're at RepFest or at home, I would really challenge you to take these this grow module and the type of questions that you're supposed to ask. And I'd really, I'd really challenge you to take it to heart and do it because it's going to make the rest of the coaching class so much easier for you. Um, this is really where Avon is gearing everybody towards is the way you ask questions and how you listen with another question. So it is really important that you get the steps of grow kind of close to you. And if you're not if you're just not comfortable with asking these questions, continue to role play. This is really where we stretch outside of our, our comfort zone. 
I, um, I see that Kim said she felt that, um, I felt that was when I really learned what to do and now I'm ready to go out and practice. Okay, Kim, so I think you're talking about our role playing session, right? Um, is when, is when you really kind of got an idea of how those questions were supposed to go and, and what that looked like. And now you feel like you can really get out there and go. And I know a lot of times um, the homework, it gives you a starting place, but you might not know what to do with that until you have your one-on-one -on -one call. And I completely understand that. So if you're feeling like that and your one-on-one -on -one call is one of the ones that's in the second of the two weeks or closer to our collaboration call, and you would like to move that up and closer to the seminar call so that you have more time to practice after our one-on-one -on -one, instead of more time to practice before the one-on-one, -on -one, let me know. That's something that you can connect with me privately and, and we can move, we can find a, a place that's closer to the seminar call for you so that you have more time between one-on-one -on -one and wrap up. Um, but really, again, this program, you're going to get out of it what you guys put into it. And I know sometimes it feels, it feels very difficult to, um, to make time to do these things because you have other things that are on your schedule and important. And I really would challenge you to make this a priority. The people that have gone through this program in the pilot, while some of them didn't give it their all, so, you know, they may not have moved business. There are quite a few people. I want to say they said 70% of the leaders that went through the pilot program moved up at least one title within the 13 weeks. And it was just by simply doing the steps that, that we will go over. Now, um, when we were at coach school, it was 70% had moved up a title during the program. They shared with us last week, Alonzo shared with us, that 35% of that 70 have now moved up an additional title. So two titles within about a four month, you know, uh, kind of a, um, what, a quarter and a half that these people have moved up in title twice. And it's just by simply putting these best practices into play in their business and stretching them. So, Kim, I'm not sure. Is that a person with their hand up? Do you have something you want to add? Maybe, maybe. Is there anybody that did not have their one-on-one -on -one call? Oh, you want to you want to move my one. Uh, you want to move your one on one. Perfect. We'll get together. Well, I'm sure I'll see you in Nashville, or I can even call you after. Um, oh, you'll be jumping on a plane after this call. We will get together over the next couple of days, and we'll move your one on one closer to the seminar. And like I said, anybody else that wants to do that, by all means, you're more than welcome to do that. Just remember that that means that you are in a crunch time to do your worksheet. Now, does anybody want to do a, a mock role play while we're on the phone so that you can see how these grow conversations go? Does anybody want to do one? Two of you together. No. Okay, if 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 nobody wants to collaborate <laughs> on the collaboration call, I completely understand. Um, I will use a little bit of this time to, to prepare you guys for next week's goal setting. I want you guys to be prepared for seminar call Wednesday at noon. The seminar call for goal setting is very detailed. So that's definitely a call that if you miss, you will definitely need to listen to the playback. There are several worksheets in the goal planning module, and they're very detailed worksheets. And there's instructions because you guys will be pulling some of your information from Vibe to plug into these worksheets. So I will be attaching a step-by-step -step on how you pull that information out of Vibe
and you put it into an Excel file and copy and paste into your worksheet. If you do not have Excel, you have a couple of options. You can either get Excel or you can get the information from Vibe and just copy it over to your worksheet manually, pen and paper, and not copy and paste. You don't have to put it into an Excel file. The only reason you would need Excel is to do the copy paste. So I just want you guys to be prepared that we are losing one day in the goal setting module because of RepFest. However, the goal setting module is one of our most intensive modules. Um, so the reason that it changed from Tuesday to Wednesday, ladies, is again, I have coaching class all day Tuesday. So I will not be able to do a group call our, our um, seminar call on Tuesday. And then I'm flying home Tuesday evening. I get in at three o'clock in the morning, Wednesday morning, and um, my calls start at eight. So they will definitely be, it will definitely be a busy, busy module, but I want you guys to be prepared for it, not because I'm trying to scare you, but just because it is intensive. You will be sitting down, you, you'll do, be doing goal planning or personal goals. You will also be doing goal planning for your team goals. And the planning will look a lot like three different stages. The first stage being personal and team for a two week period, a goal that you can accomplish within a two week period that gets you closer to a goal that you want within a quarter that gets you closer to the goal that you want within the next year. So you will be planning your team goals for the next 26 campaigns during this module. If goal setting is something that you are unfamiliar with or not comfortable with, this is going to be a really good time to have thoughts going on because like I said, you will be goal setting for not only you, but for your team, for a quarter, for a year, and for a campaign. And we will go over what the measures of those goals are on that kickoff call. But this is definitely something that you wanna have your dream in mind before the kickoff call. You wanna know where you wanna be a year from now before that seminar call. So it is kind of important that you guys think about that. And again, at any point in time, if this is, if you guys have questions about these, if you have attended the seminar call, then by all means, call me with your questions because that means you've already gotten the training and there's something that, that you're not understanding. Call me with those questions. We'll go over that specific area. If for some reason you miss the seminar call on a module, it's going to be very important for you to listen to the playback about the seminar call because that is where all the instructions are given of what to do and how to do it. Now, if you have questions after you listen to the playback, by all means, give me a call. Unfortunately, the way our schedules are, I do not have time to go through the entire seminar call one on one for somebody that missed it. It's just a lot easier to listen to the playback and then call me if you have questions after that. Um, as we get into more and more modules, they get more and more intensive. So they do get a little more time consuming and they do require that you actually put into play over the two weeks what we have done. So again, I do wanna challenge you guys to take conversational selling and actually put it into play over this next couple of days because when we get into goal planning, you're not gonna have a whole lot of time to do the conversational selling, role playing and things and um, and it does become very important when you're setting your goals to know what your conversion rate with this new conversational selling is to be able to make attainable goals, if that makes sense. Does anybody have any questions about what's going to happen next week and, and how we're going to move forward? Yes, Kim, what's your question?
you're just learning on Wednesday about goal planning. That is correct. On Wednesday, no, there's nothing you need to prepare. The only thing you guys need to have ready with you on Wednesday when we sit down at noon for the seminar call is your dream. You just need to know where you would like to be in a year. And that doesn't necessarily need to be your ultimate dream. Your ultimate dream could be a three-year plan, a five-year plan. We just really want to nail down where you would like to be personally with your Avon business in the next 26 campaigns, so one year from now, and where you would like to be with your team in the next 26 campaigns, one year from now. And then the worksheets will take you through breaking that down. So if I want to be there in a year, what do I need to do each campaign to get there in one year? And then we'll go over, um, you know, is it attainable? Is it something that fits within your ultimate dream? Is it relevant to what you already know how to do and what you've done in the past? Um, is it measurable? Did you put clear timelines on your goal? Is it something that we can say you either did it or you didn't do it? So this is, like I said, it is intensive and it is very, very productive. So for those of you that are not used to setting goals, it, it may be a little more challenging. And for those that like setting goals, this is going to be your dream module because you're basically planning out your next 26 campaigns and the daily activities that you need to be doing within each campaign to get to that goal by this time next year. We're also going to take into to account um, Avon selling trends, which campaigns, months, quarters are really busy for you guys and which ones are not. So which campaigns, months, quarters, can you guys expect a lot more out of your business? And which ones can you kind of relax a little bit and know that that's just kind of a trend that it slows down during that time? So this is really a lot of information we're going to go over for goal setting. Is there anybody that has any other questions um, in regards to goal setting or the actual topic of today's call, which is conversational selling using the GROW method. No questions from Miss Kim or Patty. I know they're on the, um, the call together. They're sitting at the airport. You guys have gotta be just antsy and ready to get to Nashville. On a completely different note, who else is leaving either today or this evening? Anybody? Uh, Teresa is. I am. That's right. Late this evening, right, Teresa? Like a midnight flight. Correct. Yeah. Awesome. So we have to leave at 9 to get to the airport. Oh, my goodness, you poor people. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> oh, no, don't be sorry. I did. <laughs> You're going to play all night long. Hopefully you'll get to sleep. Now, I would um, thunderstorms in Vegas, Kim says. So their flight has been delayed. Well, good news, Kim and Patty. You guys have time to role play, grow conversations. Now, Laura, I know you did role play. So I'm going to put you on the spot if you don't mind for just a second. What was your favorite opening question? What question did you find was easy to use? And you think you could use it no matter where you are or who you're talking to. Did you find a favorite? I think complimenting. That's my most strong one. I love that. So when you're complimenting, are you complimenting on an article of clothing or are you complimenting on the person themselves? And what I mean is, you know, complimenting a thing would be like, I love that necklace. Complimenting the person themselves would be, wow, you know, you have a great smile. Something that is an attribute of the person and not something that they put on. Which one are you using? Um, I, I think I use both. I'm, I really love to talk to people. So whatever 
like if they're really nice, they're giving a great customer service, I'll be like, you are such a nice person. Um, I really appreciate it. I love so, yeah, that. I think both. I love yeah. that. Now, are you I like finding... to let people know. Right, you like to let people know what? Oh, that, um, like, I feel that um, make them feel good if, if I tell them something nice, and it's, it's genuine, so... I like that. That's the key word to that, I think, Laura, is that when it's genuine, you know, sometimes and and we've all we've all felt it. I don't remember who I was talking to on the one on one with, but they brought up Primerica and how many of you have tried, you know, have somebody has tried to recruit you for something like Primerica or a um, a similar business. And I will tell you their recruiting style feels very aggressive most of the time. And we laugh because in Avon, we can get very aggressive too. And I'll tell you when somebody comes at me and says, I love your shoes and then go straight into, you know, I have a business opportunity I'd like to share with you. I'm like, really? So my shoes brought you over here just so you could start talking to me about your business. So I'm very put off when the compliment doesn't feel genuine. But when you're at a supermarket or you're at a place where you see somebody giving amazing customer service, even if they didn't give that customer service to you and you walk up to that person, and this can be a very direct approach, right? Because there's some times where the grow conversation, you don't have time for it. All you have time to do is make a contact and then the conversation has to come later. We've all encountered that, the barista at Starbucks, the checker at the grocery store. They don't have time to give you a 10 minute conversation, right? So it's just opening the door for a further conversation at that point. And what Laura is doing is perfect. You know, the, the checker asks you, is there anything else I can help you with? And Laura says, no, but, you know, I would like to tell you, I've watched you wait on, you know, the four people before me. And I have to tell you, you have amazing customer service. And it's a pleasure to, to have you wait on me. You're smiling. You're nice. You're engaging people. And, and that's a really rare thing these days. I'd love to give you my business card because I work for a beauty company and I'm always looking for people to be a part of my business that has a personality like yours. Please give me a call if you'd like to have some more information on this. And you leave because there's certain times that that's the kind of conversation that they have time for. And if there's an interest, then there's an interest. Now, if it's a grocery store that you go to all the time, let's think about that. I go to the same grocery store all the time because I'm a creature of habit, right? So I see, let's just call the checker. Sue. I see Sue probably four times a week. I've seen Sue be pregnant. I've seen Sue have a baby. I've seen Sue complain about daycare. I've seen Sue, and these, this is real, by the way. I just don't know this checker's name. Let's just throw that out there. It's the same checker I'm talking about. She's at the Little Dollar General at my store, and I've seen this girl go through everything. I swear when she started there, she had to have been right out of high school. And she's probably not even 20 years old now. And I've seen her go through so much as far as just watching her you know, and having her wait on me. Now, how easy would it be for me to ask Sue a couple of questions each time I go into the store? Just get to know her a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. Then eventually I could uncover a need, right? What kind of questions could I ask Sue one at a time to uncover a need. Does anybody want to throw out a question that I might be able to ask Sue to get the conversation going that would lead to the next time I see her a couple days later saying, oh, remember when you told me this? I've been thinking about that. How's the baby, Kim says. So how's your baby? I know, you know, how old is the baby now? Very good. How about... You know, something like, wow, I have seen you here so much lately. Have you been working a lot of overtime? You know, she's either going to say yes or no. I know that's not an open-ended question, but it re leads right into, tell me, how much time are you getting to spend with your baby and how does that feel? 
I bet, I bet he or she's growing up quickly. What would it feel like to be able to spend more time with the baby? Well, what's stopping you from spending more time with the baby? If you could spend more time with the baby, what would you do? Do you see how all of these questions can slowly identify a need? And they don't have to be done all at once, right? I can go into the store this morning and pick up milk and ask Sue, how old's that baby of yours now? And she's going to say, oh, my goodness, just hitting terrible twos and all over the place like a crazy person. And then when I come back this evening because I forgot to get broccoli to go with dinner, I can ask her again. So tell me a crazy story about the terrible twos. It's been so long since mine have been that young. And you just strike up a conversation every time you go in. If you have time to ask a couple questions, you ask them. If not, you ask them the next time. But by all means, the whole point of this module is to grow a conversation and to build a relationship. By the time you have identified Sue's need, she clearly sees that need too. And I don't remember who, whose one-on-one -on -one I was with when we started cracking up laughing because by the time we were done, I, we said, you know, pretty much you're getting that door wide open. We tend as Avon representatives to get the door cracked, right? The need is barely there. They cracked the door and we try to wiggle right in. But with the grow questions, you're getting that door wide open. So they have clearly, clearly given you the need. And you have restated that need in a different way by asking more questions. So by the time they have said they need more money and they would love to take a Hawaiian vacation because they need a break from their chaotic life. And the only thing that's stopping them from taking a Hawaiian vacation is the more money they need. And you let them know, you know, that this opportunity fits right in. They can't really look at you at that point and say, oh no, you know what, never mind. I don't need more money. And I, I really, I lied to you. I don't wanna go on a Hawaiian vacation, right? It's kind of hard for them to take it all back once that they have clearly laid it out. So basically what these grow conversations do for you is it gives you a yes, eight times out of 10, seven times out of 10, once you really identify the need. And Kim also put something up, daycare for a two-year-old is crazy expensive. She says, oh my goodness, when my little ones were two, daycare was crazy and I basically worked just to pay to put them in daycare. I can't even imagine how much it is now. That's gonna get her talking. How many of you have found through conversations, connecting with a frustration is easy? Anybody wanna chime into that? Kim says yes. I have found sometimes connecting with a frustration is the easiest opening to. Paula also says yes. People get frustrated, they wanna tell you about it. Laura says yes. People like to gripe, right? And nobody at home wants to listen to them gripe. So they'll gripe to a stranger all day long. So if you can find that common ground in that frustration, listen to them enough about that frustration and then move it forward. Kim says the frustration that we talked about in the mall scenario, oh, that one was funny. And honestly, Kim, I had that same scenario with a few of you on the one-on-one -on -one calls. So if you were another person who had the mall scenario and I shared with you, oh my gosh, I just paid $200 for a pair of jeans that has more holes than fabric, we connected, right? We connected because I was the person you were talking to in that role play and you were trying to find a need or a why for me. Well, for some of you, that conversation led down to, I didn't need money, but what I really needed was time to spend with more people. The only reason I was at the mall with my daughter is because I was stuck in a cubicle five days a week and didn't get any outside connection. So the mall was my outside connection. That gave you your open door to talk to me about an Avon business. For some of you, it was, 
I just, you know, I budget all summer long to be able to afford the school clothes because they're ridiculously priced. That led you to an, you know, an open door for a conversation. So it really depends on what the person says, right? And it really, really depends on the questions you ask and where you take it. Kim, would it be okay with you if, if I shared the role play that you're talking about on the group chat? Because Kim took that role play down a different road than anybody did. Thank you, Kim, for saying yes. So the role play scenario of the mall, let me set it up for you guys, for those of you who haven't had your one-on-one -on -one, or for those of you that have and we didn't do that one. At the mall, you are a mom that's taking your child to, to the mall and you run into their friends and their friends' moms all the time. This is something that you do you know, quite often. And the other moms know that you sell Avon, but you've never been able to talk to them about the opportunity. You just can't get around to it. You've never bridged to the opportunity. Some of those other moms may even buy products from you or have tried products from you, but um, they just don't know about the opportunity at this point. So, you know, Kim walked up to me and she's like, you know, basically, oh my goodness, can you believe school clothes are so expensive? And, you know, we had the whole conversation about the holy jeans and she really did try to lead me down a road of needing more money. And I was ornery with Kim and I shut her down. I didn't need more money. So what Kim found was I needed a way to help my 14 year old daughter see the value of money. My 14 year old daughter in this scenario felt entitled and she felt like those $200 jeans were just, you know, $20 jeans from Walmart. That's what everybody gets. Why are you making a big deal of it? So Kim shared a story with me that was true and very relatable in the role play where she said, you know, my eight year old wanted to go to Disneyland and did not understand how expensive it was to go to Disneyland. And so I started an Avon business to make money to go to Disneyland for my eight year old daughter. But what ended up happening is my eight year old daughter got to see what it took to make that money, the effort and the time that was put in. She helped Kim bag the orders, place the orders, take the orders, deliver the orders, all the little things that eight year olds actually like, like doing with you when your kids are little and you're doing your Avon business. So it was fun for her to help anyway. But the great thing Kim did was she gave her that money that was earned and then she had to plan that Disneyland trip. So she knew how much money she needed and what it took to get there. And she suggested that I do something like that with my 14 year old daughter on the role play. Why don't you start an Avon business so that you can really teach your daughter how, what it takes to earn money? because you know she can't get a job at 14 years old, but you can really instill the values of what it takes to earn money with your daughter. And I was so proud of Kim on that call because how many of us have had these conversations with people that have said, my kids don't know the value of money and we don't know where to go with that, right? Laura said, I like that. I was astonished because by the end of the conversation, Kim had me convinced that the only way to, to teach my 14 year old daughter the value of money was that I should sign up and be an Avon representative and really go through this business with her. And then by the time she was 18, we, we may have built a great business. She could then become a co-signer and take over that business while she's in college and have a supplemental income to help her get through college. I mean, this, this conversation went to great, to great places. So it just goes to show you, think outside of the box and listen to what the person is saying. Do not have a pre-planned need because just because that person complained about a $200 pair of jeans doesn't mean they can't afford it. Just means they're frustrated about buying it for some reason. Find out what that frustration is. 
So thank you, Kim, for letting me share that because that was a great role playing conversation. And that is one that I would love to share more often. Um, it's the first time I have heard anybody go down the road of sign up and make your um, your child your helper to teach them the value of money. We've all done it with, you know, a 17 year old, almost 18 year old that wants to, you know, wants to sell and they're ambitious. And we say, do you have a parent or guardian that would be willing to help you with this? This is a totally different thing. This is the mom is willing to make this work to show the child the value of hard work and money. So that was really, really great, Kim. Does anybody else want to share anything from their role playing or one on one that they felt was an eye opener? I'm going to let you guys have just a couple of minutes to type or to do anything. But if nobody wants to share role playing, we have recap or we have kind of given you an overview of what goal setting is going to look like. We've recapped conversational selling. And the, the really important thing to remember about conversational selling is the grow module, the getting to know you know, the person and their need. The recommending the right Avon solution. And remember, for, for our purposes, the right solution is going to be the opportunity. And then offering that relatable story. Many of you shined in this category. Many of you were able to really connect and get to know that person through offering that relatable story. And I will tell you, once somebody connects with you and that bond is made and they feel that connection, the chances of that yes at the end of the conversation skyrocket. But they are not going to bond with you until you've asked enough questions. Dig a little deeper, Patty says. Yes, ma'am. They have not, they're not going to bond with you until you do just that. Dig a little deeper and get to know them and their why. And that doesn't mean being nosy, just like Laura's daughter shared. It doesn't mean she was pushy or nosy or invasive. She just asked simple questions and listened. And remember, people aren't going to go deeper than they want to. Your questions will only go as deep as that person allows you to go. So you're not trying, you know, to get down to, so how much money do you make annually in your household and how do you spend it? Let me help you get, do your budget. That's not what we're doing. It's one of those, you know, you're standing in the grocery line and the person in front of you looks absolutely wiped out and she turns around and looks at you like, oh my gosh, I can't get to the front of the line any quicker. And you look at her and you say, I'm right there with you. It looks like you've had a really hard day. And she says, you have no idea. And all you say is, if you could be anywhere but here, where would you be? Well, guess what? That just opened up a whole other conversation because she's going to go some direction with that. Where would you be? I'd be on a beach with a drink in my hand and nobody else around. What's stopping you from taking a vacation? What's stopping you from doing that right now? That question, what's stopping you or what's keeping you from doing it or what has prevented you from doing it so far, that's going to identify a need very quickly because they're going to give you exactly why they haven't, right? So that's where usually we would jump right in. My challenge to you guys in this grow conversation is when that need is identified with a question like that, ask another question to clarify the need. So let's do that a little bit. I'm behind the lady. She says she'd love to be on a deserted island with nobody else. And I ask her what's stopping her. And she says, well, I have five kids at home and a husband that doesn't know how to cook dinner. What could we say to that? Because to really find her need, because she still didn't share a need. What's stopping her? Well, what's stopping her right now is that she has people to take care of. Right. So my question to that would be, why don't you take them all on the vacation? Why don't you? It sounds like you could all use a vacation. 
when was the last time you had a family vacation? And then she's going to go into that. If it was, you know, sooner rather than later, wow, then it sounds like maybe you and your husband need a little bit of a getaway, some adult time. If it's been years since she took a family getaway, then why has it been so long? What's been stopping you? And you'll eventually get to the need. If it's not money, it's time. You know, whatever it is, there's something that's stopping her. And once she has made that crystal clear, that's when you can bridge to Avon. That's when you can find something about Avon that fills her need. So with that being said, if nobody has any questions, I'm going to give you back a little bit of your time today because I know everybody is crunched for time. Now, I moved several things around today. So I know, Teresa, you have a call with me today, and I know Miss Barbara Clark has a call with me today. If either one of you need to move those times, I've actually moved times. So your times are still good with me. I'm not telling you to move times. But if there's a time that works better for you, shoot me a text or give me a call and let me know what it is, and I'll let you know if it opened up. I was able to get some things done yesterday and take them off of my calendar today. So I've moved some things around and created some holes. So for those of you that need me today, if you have a better time than what we've already planned, shoot it over to me and I'll see if I can, I can accommodate you today. Um, other than that, good luck in your conversational selling. Role play, even if you're a crazy person and role play in your own head, role play. Um, and I say that lovingly because I'm the crazy person that role plays in my own head constantly. I have conversations with myself in my head at least, I don't know, 10 minutes out of every hour of the day. And when I'm driving, it's a huge one. So those of you that are driving to the airport, if you're driving alone, talk out loud in your car, have conversations with yourself, role play. Kim role plays with her cat, which is even more hilarious than role playing with myself. So thank you, Kim, for making me not the only crazy person. But role play with anybody who will listen to you. And you know, we have kitty, we have kittens. They they do. They cock their head. They listen to you. It feels like you have somebody listening. So role play with anybody that will listen to you and ask as many questions as you can until you get stuck. And just go, go, go. Um but by all means, have fun with it. If you need me, call me. I'll role play with you as long as I'm not flying because role playing can go anywhere. I challenge you to use these conversations in your everyday life. Role play with your husband, role play with your children, role play with, you know, anybody that you want. Just get comfortable asking questions. And hopefully I'll see some of you in Nashville. And um, those of you that are traveling today and tomorrow, safe travels. Those of you that still need to do your one-on-ones, give me a call. Um, get me your homework, and we'll do those one-on-ones. And then good luck. Reach out to me if you guys need me. But by all means, conversational selling is really, really, really the foundation to the rest of what we're doing. If we can get comfortable with talking to people and building relationships, imagine what your business can do. It's all about relationships. Thank you so much, guys. I'm gonna leave it open and on for just a few minutes, just in case you guys have questions you wanna ask me, but by all means, hang up and get on with your day. You're welcome, you're welcome, guys. Thanks, Jenny. You're welcome, Teresa. See you in Tennessee. Yes. See you, at four. See you at four. Yes. Oh, that must be Teresa. Yes. I'll talk to you at four. I'm excited. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.